What is up, everybody? This is Stock Market Education, and today we're going to be going over how to invest $1,000 for beginners. Okay, so let's just get right on into it. So the first thing that I would do is I would invest in an ETF. So I would invest in either the Dow, uh, S&P 500, or the Russell 2000, okay? And I would invest in one of these uh, ETFs is because this, first of all, it's guaranteed to go up over time, right? It's guaranteed to go up as long as the US economy and the global economy is doing well, then these are guaranteed to go up, especially in the long term. The S&P averages about a little less than 10% uh, every year annually if you hold it long term, okay? And this, what this is gonna do for your portfolio is it's gonna give it stability, okay? This is, also, this is gonna act as your anchor, right? So, and the reason why you want to have an anchor is because it'll decrease the volatility of your portfolio. And I can tell you by experience, okay, you do not want to have a portfolio that is super volatile where it's going up or down, you know, 5% a week or 10% a week, because I promise you, you will fall off that roller coaster and you most likely will lose a lot of money. There are some people who can handle it over the long term, but there's also a lot of people who think they can handle it when they're starting out. And then, you know, a month in or two months in, they lose, you know, half their portfolio. And the next thing you're going to want to do is for stocks two and three, you're going to want to pick well-known companies. OK, so this is going to be companies like McDonald's or companies like Pepsi or companies like Walmart, you know, because you want to have companies in your first year that have strong brand names because these are the safer stocks that tend to go up. You know, they're a little less volatile and they tend to go up on average, uh, you know, not much more, but consistently over time. OK, and a big reason for that is because these companies are non cyclical. So in the 2008 crisis, people were still, you know, shopping at Walmart. People were still drinking Pepsis. People were still, you know, eating McDonald's. So these are safer stocks because they don't get affected by the cycles of the markets as much. They still get affected, but not nearly as much. OK, so that is also a big reason as to why you should have this in one one of your first two years of investing. And one of the things that you should look for in these companies is that it should have a low P.E. ratio. OK, so I'd say in today's markets, probably looking for a stock that's like a 20 or below for P.E. ratio. OK, this will show you that it's valuable and you should also look at the forward P.E. ratio compared to the trailing P.E. ratio. OK, if the forward P.E. ratio is less than the trailing, then that indicates that the company is going to get valuable over time. OK, then how it where it is right now. And another aspect about these companies is that they're fully grown companies. OK, so take McDonald's, for example, McDonald's is already on every single corner of the entire world. Unless they want to diversify their product line, which they have been doing, there really isn't much growth for them left, which isn't a bad thing. It means that they're extremely stable. It's a brand that everybody knows of. And this is one that I have in my portfolio right now. It has done me a lot of good in my portfolio so far since I've had it since I had like December or so. And the fourth and final stock that you should have in your portfolio is a growth stock, okay? A company that is growing and ideally that is growing quickly, okay? So these are companies like Apple, Facebook, Microsoft. You know, a lot of these fast growing companies just naturally end up in the tech space anyways. And what you wanna look for in these companies is a company that has revenues that are increasing, okay? When you're looking at a growth stock, you wanna pay attention to the revenues, to the earnings, to profit, to net income. Everything on the income statement is valuable knowledge that you should have to know and analyze before putting your money into one of these growth stocks okay and another aspect about these stocks is they don't pay a dividend they take all of the excess retained earnings from their company and they reinvest it back into the company okay <clears throat> this is what almost all of these companies do uh, apple pays a small dividend and so does microsoft but i know that facebook doesn't and they just reinvest their money back into their company so that they can grow even faster, okay? And you should always look into these companies where investor relations pages into their 10Ks or other parts of their SEC filings, and you should see exactly what their plan is to grow into the future, okay? 
And I guarantee you that whatever growth company you pick for your fourth pick for your portfolio, it will be either the highest or the lowest return on equity, okay? Because these growth stocks, when they're still growing, they're very volatile with their prices. It's pretty hard to put a target price target on them as to actually how valuable it is. That's why you, I don't really look at PE ratios when I'm looking at growth stocks. It's mostly about the growth, okay? Where the revenues are, how profitable they are, you know, do they consistently beat earnings? What is their product line right now? How are they going to diversify their product line in the future to grow even more profit? Uh, you have to answer all of these questions before you're able to find out whether or not this stock is right for you. And that is how I would invest $1,000 if I were beginning in the stock market today. If you guys liked the video, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make more videos of this uh, in the future. Whether you liked it, hated it, or indifferent about it, I would love to know your opinions. And as always, this is Stock Market Education.